Hello and you're watching the Cornwall Channel. I'm Lewis Nichols and today I am joined by legendary comedian Jeff Rowe. So hello Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us today outside the hall for Cornwall. Well, it's not a problem because we're all set up now, there's nothing to do. So I'm just <laughs> glad of someone to talk to really. You know what I mean? You get Rather bored. Company. Yeah, I walk around every town in England. So you must love, I mean, you're here in Truro, the capital of Cornwall. Um, yeah. But you said to me on the phone uh, prior last week that this show's gonna be slightly different to the other shows that you've it, done. Well, the thing is, when I'm in Cornwall, I can talk and I talk about places that they all know. Yeah. And I can talk in, in and use language, like accent that nobody else would understand. <laughs> so, you know, they're all as Cornish as I am. And, yeah. that, and that's great. I always like coming home, isn't it? And you've got to have a good audience. I've already seen people yeah, uh, talking in I there. I think they said to... there's six empty seats. Well, uh, that that's not too bad. But know. we liked about six more, but there you go. You can have everything at my age, can you? Well, I was going to say, how many shows a week do you do now? Because I know you're very active in the yeah, club. And there like is, um, last week we did, where we did Hereford, Solihull, and um, where was Porth Call in okay. Wales. That's, we did three last week, and then this is the only one this week, and next week I do Western Supermare and Torquay. Well, I'm somewhere on the Saturday, I don't know. And do you still have your club? No, the club was closed down three okay. years ago. Different times, yeah. Lewis, you know? People used to go out to entertainment. And I was lucky, because I'd done all those hard clubs right through the 70s and 80s, yeah. you know? And I saw brilliant acts, absolutely brilliant acts, that nobody knew. Nobody knew them, and I clocked them all for years. So why aren't these superstars? And of course, when I opened my own club, all those people that I, they, I brought them all to Lou yeah. down. And people couldn't believe the quality of act. But they, they should have been stars, every one of them. Dennis Beard, a little man from Wolverhampton, unquestionably was the funniest man I ever saw in my life, ever. Wow, never made it on television. Never made, an 80 year old, he was 80 then, um, um, comedy magician. Absolutely hilarious. When he was in the club, I could watch him for about a minute. I used to go and lean over the hedge, he was that funny. And I mean, but it's clear now that comedy's changed. It's very much an observational thing. You've got your Lee Evans, your Michael McIntyre. So it's not as kind of, you didn't like, you know, in the 80s, you had people like Jim Davidson, you had yourself, you, know, you had no. your real comedy. Um, comedy is, comedy is an individual thing. I'd never say, I, the new comedy I listen to every night virtually yeah. live in the bar, and I listen to all, but it's not my comedy. But I wouldn't say it's wrong, because comedy is what makes you laugh. Yeah. If those people are laughing at that and, and they love it, fine, that's comedy. Then a lot of people wouldn't like what I do, but then there is no, there is no um, rule with, with comedy. If, it, if you find it funny, it's good. If you don't, it's bad. Yeah. Simple as that, all right across the board. Is there only one kind of on the current scene at the moment that you're a fan of, that you enjoy to watch? Is there somebody out there at the moment that you think um, be? I would think Peter Kay, for me, would be yeah. the best of them, because probably he would be more leans the word mainstream which but well, i was, wasn't the gag man i've been a storyteller because i couldn't remember all them gags but i could remember a few stories you know and um, peter k i don't know if you've seen it yourself he did this uh, thing on song titles and misheard lyrics oh, yeah, have, yeah. You, have you seen that one no I that's a clip you can get on youtube and see that one yes youtube not me <laughs> yeah, must be joking. i haven't got a computer <laughs> Um, but so when for you would you say your big break in the television uh, industry came in so when did you break it was into crazy TV? i used to do um uh, a charity with with jim davison and jim bowen marty kane myself i was the only no unknown on the bill really we used to do it for the sharon Allen leukemia trust okay we did we did one in the coliseum and we stole it out it was called night of a thousand laughs and we went up all of us it was a great night and marty kane was gorgeous absolutely loved marty kane i brought my out marty died she's such a lovely person i can't speak couldn't speak any higher of a person than i did marty kane and um we was doing the show in blackpool and i had been um uh shortlisted to the last 50 they wanted nine new comics for the series yeah. of nine shows and i've been shortlisted in the last 50. i said to my manager john miles i said we'll never well done to get me in the last 50 but they'll never come to to cornwall they'll go to liverpool or the midlands or london you know i said well done but it won't go any farther and i 
I did this show in Blackpool. They wouldn't let me see the theatre with the Opera House. They wouldn't let me see the theatre. It said it frightened the life out of him. <laughs> it's too big. Yeah. So anyway, it was packed. And I did have a good show. And I came off and I was pleased to have gone that well. And the man said, you'll be on the Desert Corner show. I said, you think I will? He said, I'm involved with it. Yeah. Wow. So, and then the, the craziest thing. So let's look at it. I had to be there, I had to go well, he had to, to be there and hear me, and he had to have seen my name on the list. It's like winning the lottery, <laughs> isn't it? You've got four numbers, drop the same time. And then I got booked to do the Desert Corner show, and I went up on the Monday for rehearsal. On the Tuesday, I went and spoke after dinner somewhere up north, and I come back on the Wednesday, but it wasn't a live show, it was being okay. recorded. And you imagine how, how many times I'd rehearsed what I was going to do. Yeah. Big chance, massive chance. Desert Corner Show Wednesday night was massive. And I'm on it, for God's sake. You know, I, I'm come from St. Burien on a bike. You know, it, it <laughs> couldn't be there. And um, I rehearsed right through what I was going to do. And uh, because it was recorded, there was no time limit on how long it could go on. And I'd done everything that I was going to do. In, and I'd been through it a million times. Yeah. You know? I know exactly what, and I'd gone well and I was pleased I'd gone well and because there's not uh, no time limit on it because it, it was a recorded show um, Dez is milking me for more okay. now the only thing I could think that was decent and clean enough to go on television was the train at Camborne I wasn't going to do it <laughs> I wasn't going to do it because they were milking me for more I did it and it was that story that made me and so I shouldn't have been on it at all unless it was a bit of luck in Blackpool yeah. and I wouldn't have been remembered because I didn't tell so just a run of absolute luck so you're gonna leave that out originally you didn't know mm -hmm. whether to put, you didn't know whether to put the, the train of Campbell in well but, I wasn't gonna do it yeah. at all I worked out what I was gonna do and you worked there quite a few times at nine appearances or quite uh, a few nine or eleven or yeah. something like a lot anyway yeah. you used to ring me about once a week and I said look I haven't got enough new material yet <laughs> ring me in a fortnight you know but um, I think you, you can do too much television. Um, don't go on unless you're going to be as good or better than what you was last time. Yeah. And you know, I've seen people come on and they're very, very good and then they keep doing television and they go down and down and down. Yeah. Don't do it. You're better off not to do it. Be remembered for being funny if you can. But you can go even now. Um, it's the, the business all ran the wrong way. In my early days, I had no experience, no material. I worked the hardest clubs you could ever work. Yeah. You know, when people were shouting to leave and go home in a, in a jerky fashion, you know. And um, that was I, that, I, that was really, really hard. And you didn't know how you was going to be taken until you got there. And now after all these years, with 42 years experience and 42 years of material, I worked the easiest places you could ever work. Everybody paid to come and see me, said they wanted to see me. I could have done with a bit of this back when I was struggling. So it was hard. But I, I think now you're either on the television, on the Life of the Apollo, or um, it's, it's a massive jump from being a comic to getting on that show. Yeah, if you get on that show, there's no clubs you can go and serve your time. You know, it's no. Um, there's no uh, sort of practice area, is it? Well, I mean, but for you, uh, you've obviously worked your way up. You know, you've done everything, uh, what it takes to be a comedian, and you've had your TV break, and you're still doing the clubs. Mm. Um, but I've, I've watched a lot of videos on, um, like I said, YouTube with you and Jim Davidson, and you, your relationship seemed, um, you had a, lo a lot of fun. A lot of fun with well, Jim on Jim, the Jim came down and saw me in um, working in Cornwall, and, he, and I was doing a show, and he, he said, if there was a... Um, <laughs> If there was a school for comedy, they'd put you on and say, never do what this man is doing, because it's all wrong. You're, you, everything is wrong about it. But he said, it's funny. It, but see, I had, I had no one to really learn from in yeah. my early days. I had to go in the pubs and do it. And if it wasn't funny, I tried something different until I worked out what made the people laugh. And then I went um, away and I was working with bigger shows. And Jim came down to see me in Newquay one night. And um, I had a good show. And I said, what do you think, Jim? He said, rubbish. I said, rubbish, Jim? I said, I, I went well. He said, listen, when I met you first, you was right out of the sticks. Now, he said, you work with other acts and you're copying them. You'll go like them. He said, go backwards, not forwards. Probably the best advice I ever had in my life. The rest is history. Yeah, yeah.
Um, and also in 2001, I believe, you uh, performed at the Royal Variety Show. Yes, I did, yeah. Now, that must have been an honour. How do you get approached for something like that? Do they come to you and say, you know, we'd love you to do this? I think um, one of the Royals asked if I could be on it. Wow. Yeah. Because I well, know the Royals from before that. And one of them asked if I could be on it. And they put me on. And, yeah, that was that was lovely. That must have been a great, great moment for you to be oh, yeah. on the stage. Oh, uh, yeah. On the stage. The Royal Variety Show. I mean... It's it's awful long way from Cornwall, you know, yeah. um, and and sometimes when I did them things with the the company I planned, I think, Jeffro, you come from Penzance Roads in Burien in a two bedroom cottage where four six people, they're one of four brothers, <laughs> and I said, what am I doing here? And I've I've done it times. I I once went to the north of England to do a after dinner. I said, they won't understand me because my accent was that strong because I was brought up in West Penwith. Yeah. They couldn't understand me in Plymouth. I, I, they do a little bit now because I've been away that many years. My accent have changed. But if I go back home, I soon get back into it. Um, and I, I, I was doing this, this um, dinner and I said, well, nobody will understand me. I'm going to die a thousand deaths. And the first speaker got up and he said, I won't be speaking too long because our guest speaker from Cornwall, he's drunk that much, he's gonna fall over. We gotta get him <laughs> on his feet. And the second one sort of reimbursed what he said. Yes, he said, we must get him on. And I thought, I'll go on with it. And you remember I used to sound drunk? <laughs> I used to sound drunk. And I worked, did an hour and a quarter drunk. And I was able to repeat myself. <laughs> I said, I, I lucky to get here. I was lucky to to get here. I was lucky to, <laughs> to, to get here. I was, I was lucky to, to get here. I did this for an hour and a quarter and stormed the place. I love it. And I drove on that. Everybody understood me because I could repeat myself. And I drove home on my own then. Couldn't afford a driver all the way. And I rehearsed my jokes all the way home. <laughs> Drunk. And then that, the, but the Cornish people didn't understand it. But they said, why is he talking like that? But it was the niche I needed yeah, to make myself slow down. You know, and, and, and it if, if you go to a theatre now with a lot of echo, you've got to physically slow down. You've got to do 20 minutes. If you've got to do half an hour, do 20 minutes material. Okay. Slow it down by a third. And if you slow, with our accent, where I come from, Tinburian, our accent, if you slow it down, they've got time to work out what you've said. <laughs> <laughs> they need that. Yeah. I'm a Penzance boy myself. Are you? Yeah, Haymore. Oh, yeah. That's well, I, I lived in my young life in Sankreed. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to be close to my mother, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, we lived in St. Burr, and then I left there when I was seven. And then we lived in Sankreed for all my young life, really. Yeah. But there you go. And today in um, St. Just was the man engine uh, that went to keep it in. I was speaking to you earlier in the week and you were yes. telling me about, you know, the man engine. Mm. And so you, you were into the mining, because didn't you work in mining? I worked in the Levant mine for 12 yeah. months, yeah. And, and I've been in the man engine, the man engine shaft. And um, it's fascinating. And it's something eerie about that shaft. I went in, I took my helmet off and looked down and it was bottomless. And I remember it all in the 1990s and all the... It was every family in St. Justin Benin lost somebody, you know, but um, and there was a disaster, an absolute disaster. That's, that was the man engine. The man engine shaft is still there, of course. But you go down there. Years ago, um, the Western Television used to do little things around Cornwall. They were priceless. They once said there was a, a water shortage in Pendeen, and they interviewed a man out there, and they said, is a water shortage in Pendeen. Why do you think that is? In a lovely Pendeen accent, he said, the trouble will it is, people have come down from up the country and they're having a bath every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's a water shortage. <laughs> and they, 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 the woman loves and just, somebody was ill and I said, how is he? She said, well, she said, he, he sadly died. Oh, I said, I'm sorry. See, well, isn't it funny, Jeff, she said, some people die young and others go right on last minute. <laughs> Love that. I knew exactly what you meant. But um, no, it's gorgeous, isn't it? I, I love living in Cornwall. absolutely love living in Cornwall. Oh, so you would. Uh, but you also, uh, talking about Cornwall, you, before comedy, you had a, a rugby career. You played rugby. I played for the, for the Pirates. Yeah, yeah. The Pirates. Yeah, I played for the Pirates for well, several years. Did you yeah. still follow them and follow them? Oh, yeah, the yeah. Progress? When there was Penzance Newland, I was a bit of a Penzance Newland man and not a Cornish Pirates man. I was Penzance Newland, which was the Pirates, and 
Um, yeah, the, it was never the Cornish, Penzance Pirates. Yeah. yeah. It was the Penzance Pirates, not the Cornish Pirates. They could have found any name for that. But I was a bit, um, I had a bit of a problem with that. We was PNN, RFC. Yeah. And I always will be when I. But do you have fond memories of your kind of your rugby career? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I played with Stack Stevens and John O'Shea and Eric Kerr. I'm with a good team and a lot of locals, you know, um, John White and Colin Diamond, Ronnie Mongols from Hale, Peter Penrose, and Neil Kerr. Yeah, it was a good side. I've got to say, one of my favourite. Roger Pasco. Who? Sorry. Roger Pasco. Roger was only about five foot five. <laughs> the most safest fullback you ever saw in your life. Wow. Yeah. But I've got to say, one of my favourite jokes um, from you has to be the David Beckham one on the horse. I mean, yeah. I watched that, I was absolutely crying. <laughs> I mean, do you use that one a lot in your shows? Because that must. Yeah, get, I do. I must get a laugh. Yeah. You, you said you've added a bit onto that. Oh, one I now. bet. Yeah. That's that's what the stores they build. Yeah. You're doing it one night, and for no apparent reason, you just think of someone else to put in. You <laughs> see it when you're working, and you put it in, it works. So then it's part of the story, yeah. you know. So just add, add on. Oh, to yeah, each add on all the time, yeah. So what's next for you now? Do you have any kind of DVDs being released? Or no, no, I think I've done my last DVD. I'm 68 now, you know, I've been around a lot of years. I can remember when the Dead Sea was reported sick, I can. <laughs> so they, um, no, I think I'll finish the DVD yeah. now. I, I should be retired. But I do enjoy it. I was in um, Newark. There were five old ladies in the front row. They'd piddled herself for sure. They're howling, these five old ladies. Probably all the wrong side of 85. Probably all widows. And they got together and come out. And I looked at them. I said, I don't know who's enjoying this more, you or me. <laughs> I'd walk here Aww. to make them girls laugh. I'd have walked there and done that for nothing. Wow. It was just a joy to see them laugh like that. I suppose it's hard to get out of that as well. If you've got a passion for comedy and you can see that your <coughs> comedy is also making other people very happy. Yeah, you, you, it's away. in your blood, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. In your blood. But you can go around and you can do theatre after theatre and stand the crowd up in the end. It did last week. I did um, Hereford and Sally Hill. Stood the crowd up in the end without being asked for it. And that was uh, uh, voluntary. This whole crowd stood up both nights. They had a wonderful show. Went to Porth Call. Sticky. For some reason, and there's no reason why. Same man, same act. Fourth call was sticky. So um, you never get too confident, yeah. do you? As soon as you get a bit too confident, someone will knock your legs out from yeah, under you. Of course. Like you said, people absolutely love you. And you did a was it last year? You went to Jubilee Pool and you did a you did a show for the yeah. I went down it for the Jubilee Pool. Well, yeah. I, I learned to swim there, like everybody did in in West Penwith. They all went to the Jubilee Pool. We're turning the Jubilee Pool then yeah. was that bathing pool. Um, yeah, we went dead and we did a show in the marquee in the Pirates Club. Yeah. That was a good bit of fun, enjoyed that. And it's back up to it, you know, where it was now, it's looking amazing. And Prince Charles was there uh, last the one week. And only. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. The one and only. Look at that. That's the sort of rabble I gotta talk to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> these are your yeah. these are your crowds tonight. Oh, yeah. Tell us there are, right, let them go. There are, right, come and sit down, boys. Be on telly. Well, thank you so much to Jeffrey for joining me on today's show. Yeah. It's been absolutely a pleasure talking to him. Good luck tonight. Get I'm sure it's going to be a sold out show. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. You've got a crowd excited to see yes. you tonight as well. Yes. Thank you, Liam. Thank you very much. And if you, and if you ever pass in my place, pass right on. <laughs> <laughs> and if you hear anything, if you hear anything, I'll let you know. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Proper.